Welcome to Energy News Beat Podcast. My name is Steve Taylor, President and CEO of the Sandstone Group. We are at NAPE today, and I mean, this is where deals happen, but if the Energy News Beat Podcast reach happens, and I've had some fantastic guests today, but I've got even a wonderful guest, because if you're in the oil and gas space and you've got oil pads, you got to get it from the pad to the investor. You got to get it to the accounting. You got to get it to the CEO. You got to get it there. It's got to be right. Because if it's wrong, uh, you're not going to make any money. So we have Rachel Collins, and she's the CEO of uh, W Energy Software. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, Happy to be here. Oh, well, thank you. And you've been in uh, Houston for about 15 minutes. Uh, 28 years. 28 yes, years. Ever since I graduated from college. Ben, how would you graduate? LSU, go Tigers. Oh, I love the Tigers. <laughs> My son-in-law is a Tigers fan, and I've just, I've had to do it. Love Tigers. I got to install Super Mike at LSU. Okay, interesting. And, oh, yeah, that was really cool. That, that was a huge supercomputer. Uh, I was a part of the team that was back behind it, and it was fun. Well, I had a great time at LSU, and I actually have a daughter who is in her sophomore year at LSU right now. No, right. Yes, and my we have a senior in high school, and we're sending her this weekend to go hang out with her sister, Uh-oh. check out LSU. They're going to Mardi Gras in New Orleans. So, yes, I'm, uh, I've already told my family I'm going to be a, you know, stressed out all weekend, hoping they survive. And yet uh, I did this to my parents. So uh, uh, payback uh, is, is yeah, all right. Uh, payback's a burger. Yeah. Uh, kids grow up and then they get more expensive. That's exactly right. We're in the most expensive uh, phase of our lives right now. Okay. Being in Houston, we were kind of teasing. I've, I've worked here uh, for a long time as well and some uh way back in a long time ago, but the bugs were about, you know, you train them to get that. But how did you get your experience in energy? So interestingly enough, uh, I was recruited uh, from LSU. So my degree was before there was even MIS. Okay. And so we had, it was at the time, QBA or quantitative business analysis. Oh, yeah. It was a mixture of statistics and computer science. Right. And right out of school, I was being recruited by a big group of LSU alumni. Okay. In industry or Anderson Consulting, which is where everyone went. Oh. And I went into industry. I had, you know, a lot of alum from Eunice and yeah. Monroe and Lafayette, and they convinced me to get into industry. So I started at a gas pipeline, which is now Kinder Morgan. Oh, wow. And started my career there and got into midstream. Nice. Yeah. Well, we need midstream. Yeah. Um, uh, midstream seems to be a lot more profitable for folks than people realize because once you get it in there, you got to get it somewhere. Yeah, uh, and, exactly. And it's the limited partner uh, on how all that goes through. Accounting kind of is an important issue for midstream. You know, and I, I mean, accounting, when you talk about, uh, I love deep vertical market software and stickiness. Right. I mean, people don't change their accounting solutions very often. If you can no. get in, if you're stable, if it works, right. then you're in for the long haul. So I think midstream, a lot of opportunity there, but accounting, maybe even more so. Wow. Now, um, we have helped a lot of companies with disparate systems. And so if you've got SCADA on the well pad, and you've got the pumping, you got to see if the tank information, you've got all these kind of things going on. Um, tell us a little bit about your solution, because if you have it coming from a strata, everybody, you know, taking, oh, that's the wellhead. Oh, that's the drop of oil. You got to measure it, get that data to the accountant. Yeah. Tell us what your stuff does. Look, we, uh, we made an acquisition about two years ago. And it is called, at the time, it was a company called Seven Lakes. And that's where we really expanded outside of just core accounting. Right. And we got into field service management and field data gathering. Nice. And then got into production accounting as well. And so to your point, um, it's complex. I actually come from downstream retail petroleum before this. Nice. And uh, have a lot of experience with the complexity of connecting to meters and all of the IoT complexity. Absolutely. And so we know that it's, it's very complex to gather the data from the field. Often. Right. Times you're in the middle of nowhere, 
and you don't have internet access, you don't have hardwired, you don't even have satellite in some cases. And so you have to be adaptable as far as right. pulling that data, whether it be from SCADA systems manually, right. um, directly from meters. And so we have that capability through our okay. join solutions. Um, so we can pull in data from the field That's very it. easily in a standardized way. Right. And then we also can feed that into our production accounting capability. So okay. obviously you have to be able to measure that and account for what's been produced. And then we have a, a full platform end to end. So that can also then feed into revenue accounting and your full financial accounting solutions. Uh -huh. so we don't have the point solutions uh, that don't talk to each other, right. which you know can be very brittle. And, right. and frankly, expensive. We actually have invested very heavily in that full value chain oh, nice. and highly integrated platform. And I think we're, that, that makes us unique in this industry. Uh, it, it does sound that way. And as a CEO of a EMP operator, tell me about you've got to be able, as an EMP operator, you have to be able to look at your uh, investors and say, we did X number of barrels of oil. We did this. Um and so uh, live data into accounting, Yeah, uh, I'm just asking because when I get asked by a CEO, is my data accurate? Is it accurate up to the day? And in the old days, it was, you had well logs and guys were, pumpers were going by and writing it on a piece of paper. Yeah. And it's not that way now, is it? Well, I mean, sometimes, right? But we're trying to eliminate that, trying to eliminate the human error right. and manual data entry. And I think we've come a very long way. I mean, there's still always going to be unmetered wells and things right. where you still have to accommodate that. But um, we've focused very much on accuracy of data. I mean, we started as an accounting solution. And so obviously when your users are accountants, you need right. to make sure that you have reliable and accurate data. And then we expanded from there into other capabilities. So yeah. uh, obviously that's very important to us to ensure that you have real-time real, ac real -time access to your data yep. and that it is accurate. Uh, we also have a very different model in our business where we have seen a lot of software providers that try to monetize the data that is yours. And so getting access to your data is absolutely, and it's, yeah. it's challenging. And so to have your data and then in order to get access to it, to be charged again, right. we're changing that model where we have an open data model. And a lot of the investment we're doing uh, with, within R&D gives you full access to your data because we believe that the value of data is only in sharing the data, mm. uh, not you know compartmentalizing that. Nice. So a lot of investment in our data layer right now, in our custom reporting, in our dashboards. We have a lot of visualization tools that have been built. Dashboards out. are so cool. Because, they are. People love dashboards. Uh, I'm going to be kind of uh, just... Up front, as a CEO, a lot of times I'll sit there and I could care less about the underneath the, the airport. I want to look at that dashboard. Yeah. And, and when I have other CEOs look at me and go, hey, where's my dashboard? I'm like, uh, wait five minutes. And I have to rely on people like the W software that, you know, we have folks that uh, know how to use that stuff. That's right. That's so, right. Well, we've been investing uh, there because to your point, you shouldn't have to have a degree in computer science in order to use our software, right? right. And, and interpret the data. And right. so most of the investment here in the past, you know, few quarters has been in custom reporting and in dashboards. Uh, right. We've seen Microsoft Power BI, it right. has taken off. It's everywhere. Everyone's right. creating their own dashboards. And we realized that. So we've embraced it. And we've said, we're going to open up right. our data model. And if you want to build a dashboard on your own, go for it. Right. We can help you build them by training you on our data model. So you understand how to do that. And then we've embedded Power BI in our application. So you have embedded reports. Oh, that so we have a variety great. of ways that you can get to your data and you can export it. Some people still love Excel spreadsheets. If that's your jam, go for it. You can do that too. You know, um, but you know what? I'm going to introduce you to Sharon Muntz. She's with, uh, uh, in, uh, uh, NC uh, N technology, she's AI, oh. and and she, she's working with a lot of big folks, and it'd be great to have you guys just have a talk. Um, and part of that reason is somebody says, "I'm using Excel, I'm using AI." No. no. So, are you using any AI? Is that something concerning? Because in accounting. AI is great on analyzation of yeah. stuff. And how? What's your? What are you saying in that? 
We are. Um, I think every tech company is looking at how do we leverage AI. Right. If you're not, then you're probably not modern and leading edge. Um, right. We've been looking at specific use cases. So one area that we know we could improve is just documentation, support, streamlining support, providing services, because our theory is that people don't really want to talk to our support team. They want to figure out how to do it themselves. Nice. And so we have been embedding AI within our products so that we can build out self-service capabilities. And so that's been a big part of where we've started using AI. Right. Um, so we've, we've started with support and services, and we're also using it in our product and engineering team. So nice. uh, on the back end, how to accelerate our product roadmap, um, develop high quality code. So a lot of experiments going on and um, we're going to keep going. Yeah. You know, in security, uh, uh, I, we had, I don't, I don't know if you remember the uh, Colonial Pipeline where the hackers uh, got in and hijacked it. That was terrible. And uh, we are going to see a lot more of that yeah. uh, just with the way the skill of the hackers are. Uh, how's your security? Uh, you know, I mean, it's only as good as your network, probably. It's That's very true. I think that is one area as well that differentiates us. We are cloud native. Meaning we did not start as an enterprise licensed software solution. We are not a point solution. Right. Uh, we were born in the cloud. And so we've always been designed and optimized to be in the cloud. And as a result, that's quite right. different than a lot of the other yeah. players out there. And so not only do we go through all of the um, compliance ourselves, SOC 1, SOC right. 2, but we have inherited all of the security from our cloud providers as well. So right. I think that's fantastic. Right. And then obviously, I mean, we still uh, continue to invest sufficiently in cybersecurity. It's a big problem for everybody. I mean, it's it, it is. It's a scary thing. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's amazing what they're listening to, you know, and yeah, uh, they get, keep getting better and better. Well, that's good. Um, are your servers in the AWS? Or are they in several different places? Or they're in both. Um, oh. So interestingly enough, I think that like multi-cloud platform is becoming just the reality. It's a great backup. Yep. I mean, it, it's just something that it shouldn't matter where you are. Uh, cloud yeah. is just becoming a commodity. So most of our businesses originated in AWS. Uh, we have our Seven Lakes business that will probably stay in AWS. There's no reason to move it. But we have found uh, on our accounting solution, we're a big SQL Server database shop. Oh, yeah. And so we are actually in the process of migrating to Azure because of all the optimization that we can take advantage of in Azure. So that's something. And we're also seeing huge performance improvements and cost savings. So we're, we got one foot in, in both. You know, I'm sitting here uh, and uh, Michael and I have been doing the deal spotlight and I just absolutely love Michael Tanner as we go through and cut the deals and take a look at them and, and really work through them. How does W help accounts, uh, W Energy, work through the M&A process? It's a great question. Um, I think we we get it, first of all. I mean, we are we are owned by a San Francisco based investor. Oh, nice. And so um, you know, we understand just the structure of various funds and investors right. have certain expectations. Uh, as far as your throughput, your profitability. So I think that helps. But also um, what we've learned is just our strategy, our approach is very helpful for all the consolidation that's happening in upstream right now. Oh, yeah. Because what we're seeing is we are, a, we're a modular platform. What that means is that we can coexist with complex technology ecosystems nice. and we can scale up and we can scale down. And some of our customers, uh, they have acquired assets and the consolidation has actually come to our benefit. Sometimes they divest of assets and we've got to be able to scale down. And what we've seen is a lot of our, a lot of other players can't do that. They don't have that flexibility and adaptability. And we actually can move up and down wow. as our customers have their needs that change. The other thing that we've seen is sometimes a customer gets to a point where they might move on to a streamlined accounting solution such as an Oracle Financial or SAP. Right. And that happens and we can still serve them. We can coexist. We still have niche capabilities because they're highly modularized right. that we can integrate with an SAP. That doesn't mean that we are no longer relevant. So I think the way that we've architected our solution, right. um, it really does 
uh, align with a lot of our customers that are looking for that type of flexibility and who are going through high growth modes and you know acquiring assets. If I was a CEO, oh, I am, uh, but of, uh, of your type clients, um, what would they say, one of your customers, say, W does this for me? Uh, I mean, we, we do a lot. So, <laughs> so I, I think if you were to talk to a customer that has all of our capabilities, right. they use our field services, our field data gathering, our production accounting, our financial accounting, and our transportation solutions, everything in between. I think first and foremost, the value is operational efficiency. Uh, nice. That is number one. I mean, we are a, we're a one-stop shop. You don't have to have 10 different point solutions that don't talk to each other. Oh, you can have yeah. one integrated solution, one source of truth. I can say one source of truth, one pane of glass. I love from a standpoint of, uh, we talked, you know, the dashboards, Power BI, uh, you can customize so easily out of Power BI and bring it, you're dumping it in there. The sky's the limit for That's what right. uh, for what a uh, CEO needs. And you, you, I'm just sitting here thinking through all the hot buttons that you're hitting. And I'm, I mean, I'm like, okay, I'm sold. Yeah, uh, right. But the the thing that I'm really seeing is. Uh, I could almost do a uh, return uh, on investment on your software if I had three other software packages and the inconsistency and the data loss That's because right. I've done so many disparate system integrations. Um, you've got that expense. You've got the expense of not knowing. You've got the expense of are these barrels being counted? Are, is this uh, MCF of gas not being counted? The money alone that you're hitting on my hot buttons could say more than what I, I don't want to throw those words in there, but I could see it happening. 100%. I think that's one of the things that we uh, work with our customers the most to help them see, depending on who you're speaking with. If right. you're speaking to someone out in the field, uh, you know, a VP of operations, they're not always looking at things quite as holistically as you are as a CEO. And so we're trying to help our customers see the full, the total cost of ownership of all these disparate solutions, because oftentimes they're not looking at it holistically. No. And to your point, when you start adding up that you have three or four disparate solutions and you're bearing the cost of hosting those right. and you have to have operational support and you factor in the labor costs. Uh, I think we're a huge savings. And we, we know through various case studies with some of our largest customers that they're paying a fraction of what they have paid historically right. when they're spread across a multiple a variety of vendors. I haven't even seen your price deck yet. And I already guessed went through and I've already come up with an ROI statement. What does that tell you? It's fantastic. I mean, we have some of our largest customers that are paying 60 to 70 percent less than they have historically through this hodgepodge of, you know, all these different point solutions. How cool is that? that you have, uh, as a CEO, you've got to sit back and you've got to have good people to ha make all this stuff happen. We have a fantastic, fantastic great? team. It's the best part of my job is the team that I, that I get to work with. Okay. Physically, your eyes lit up mm -hmm. when you started talking about your yeah. team. That tells me that she A, loves her job and B, loves her team. So I do. Isn't yeah. that fun? I love it. Uh, it's funny. Before the holidays, when we were heading back from the holidays, my husband said, oh, we're going to head back to work next week. And I said, I am so excited. And he said, you're crazy, but can I come work for you? And of course I said, no, there's not a chance yes, that we'll no. ever work together as husband and wife. But nonetheless, I do. I, I think that our team is absolutely remarkable. Oh, and uh, I'm very, very proud of everything that we've accomplished since I've been here the last oh. year and a half. Um, and I, I sleep like a baby I, at night. I'm just excited for Debbie. And uh, how can, what's coming around the corner for Debbie? Let's come around the corner. We have our near term. I mean, look, I I think that the most important thing that we do right. is ensure that the customers that we have today right. are happy and successful. 
And we still have work to do there. We still have some customers that we need to focus on their success. Nice. And we, we need to make sure that we have a high net promoter score and that they are referenceable. And once we've yeah. done that, then we okay. earn the right to go out and chase new logos and grow inorganically. And so I would say, nice. what's on the horizon? Making sure that our customers are happy. Um, from a roadmap perspective, we are investing very heavily in integration. So as we buy capabilities, as we buy companies, we need to make sure that we continue investing in integration and data visualization. You pointed out, it's all about getting access to your data and being able to view it in a way that is meaningful to you. So those are a lot of the near term and the performance and stability and all the things that matter. Um, But then in the future horizon, we're looking at expanding our land capabilities. Right. Uh, we are, you know, we know that we have some work to do there. We are looking at, um, you know, supporting additional commodities. Right. Um, there are quite a, quite a few things that interest us to just expand, you know, the platform capabilities that we have today. You know, I can't wait to visit with you again because there's about, yeah, while I'm sitting here talking to you, I've got about 9,000 more questions and I think we can set up another one uh, later on and, and really uh, pinpoint out on some of these things because I, I'm sitting here thinking of about 15, maybe 20 CEOs and that I know their accounting systems are like, uh, dude. <laughs> you need some help. You need some work. Yeah. And um, there are other technical uh, companies that are out there that are not selling at the CEO level. You have got to sell to the C-suite. That's right. Because that man is answering to the shareholders. And once you get to the shareholders and you get to the CEO, you got to have really, really thin uh, expenses to make it in a volatile oil and gas space because natural gas is at two dollars right now, ballpark. Oil is, you know, the seventy to eighty range. Yep. But you, if they back into that and then your expenses, you keep your expenses low. You track them. Your investors are getting. Yeah. And sure, uh, I'm um, sorry. Uh, what we're saying, Rachel, is in the. Uh, 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 investment side of things, you know, people are looking for investors in oil and gas because the ESG model is changing and people want returns. Yeah. Well, your clients can't give them the returns if they don't know about it. And those managers won't be able to plug a hole in something if their accounting system doesn't provide that information. I agree. I mean, you said so many things that align to our strategy just now. Um, so, yeah, maybe three points there. I think number one, something that sets us apart is that we might be a smaller player, one of the newcomers, so to speak, but uh, we have investors, we have expectations from our investors, but what is different for us is that we are in growth mode and they are investing heavily in our business. So we are investing in our product and we are trying to expand and improve. And so I think that is a little bit different than a lot of the uh, companies out there that kind of, you know, they built the product and it's coasting, but they're not necessarily yeah. investing what they need to introduce AI yeah. and improve the user experience and simplify and make sure that the data is readily available. And so we are doing those things to ensure yep. that in these tight margin businesses, you have full visibility. Yep. And not only that, I think we're building a better product and it's more economical in that that to me is the yeah. best part of our value proposition. You, you know what's so fun is the oil and gas industry for so long didn't monitor itself, and the and and it's now doing such a great job in monitoring and doing things. They have to have this, and I don't know this answer, so I'm not trying to set you up. But one of the things that's coming up is the carbon tax and the carbon footprints and the accounting for carbon. Have you thought about that, or is that on your roadmap and trying to figure that out? And I don't, I, I yeah. don't mean to throw this out at you. No, but it's a, of course we okay. have. I mean, especially you know the whole energy transition, renewables, sustainable energy. It's a big topic, especially from our investors. I mean, we're San Francisco-based investors, and that's that's a hot topic. I, I, um, I didn't mind throwing that out. I knew. <laughs> so we are definitely looking at it. But as I mentioned. 
it's important to us to really stick to our core as well. So we do look at that and we're thinking about inorganically, is that something that is potentially an acquisition in the long run? Um, but I think before we get to that, Okay. Uh, we want to make sure, first and foremost, that we continue to serve the markets today, which are upstream and midstream oil and gas customers, nice. what's important to them. Right. And if they tell us that that is important to them, then that will hit our roadmap. But until then, we're focused on what they tell us they need from us. And I think nice. I think that for us is more important than, you know, from an outside investment view. Well, the, the regular legislation uh, through regulatory action is forcing a lot yes, of the is. carbon tax, the carbon measuring, and the accountability. And there are some products out there, and I'll do some introductions for yeah, you. Yeah, that'd be fantastic. Because uh, yeah. it's, it's coming. It is coming. And it's a pain in the rump. And we've looked a little bit. There are ways to kind of, you know, get the breadth of scope with through acquisition where you can cover some of the energy transition and potentially, for instance, we really cover physical commodity. We right. contemplated, should we uh, support physical and financial commodity? And depending on some of the M&A targets, you could also have some of the capabilities that you're referring to. So there's a lot being discussed. Um, oh, how cool. Yeah, it's it's a great time. It's, uh, it's an exciting what, time for us. I'd love to have you on a, a resource because I've got several panels that we have coming up that some of this is just phenomenal. Nominal for I would so, love to. I'm probably giving you a little bit of sneak peek into our strategic um, M and A uh, strategy here, but nice. But nonetheless, well, y'all here heard it second. <laughs> <laughs> so well, thank you so much. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. I'm going to have all your stuff and your LinkedIn address. People can reach you on LinkedIn. Fantastic. Love and, to hear from you. And uh, any feedback, please let her, let everybody know this was the best single podcast that you've ever been on, right? The the best podcast I've ever been on, and the as you pointed out, the most fun that I've had on a podcast. So there you I go. Love that. Thank you so much. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me.